guys, welcome to FR Keynotes Week 18, page 54 of your blue books. Um, we're going to be doing parts A and B, um, and then we'll do another one after this. Um, so let's go ahead and read it. We're dealing with a cylindrical barrel with a diameter of two feet across. Um, apparently it's being filled with rainwater. Um, the water drains out through a valve, which is not shown at the bottom of the barrel. The rate of change of the height of water in the barrel respect to time is given by this little formula here. So this is the rate of change of the height with respect to time. And this is what it equals. And as you guys can see, H is a part of that equation. A lot of times the ones I've given you guys always have a, a T or something in there. But this one has an H, which is a little different. Uh, they tell us that H is measured in feet and T is measured in seconds. And then they also tell us that the volume of uh, the cylinders, that formula there where R represents the radius. Um, so for part A, um, they're saying find the rate of change of the volume of the water. So my goal is, is I would like to find the rate of change of the volume. And as we know, volume is something that's going to be measured in, let's see, Probably, since they're not using any other units here, I would say cubic feet. And that's going to be in seconds for the time. Okay? So cubic feet. Um, and then they're telling us that H equals 4. Um, so let's begin here. So this is actually step 2 when we do these types of questions, which as hopefully you guys are recognizing, this is a related rate question. Step one is to recognize the, uh, well, it's to draw a picture, but they've already given us that. So actually, I'll call this step two and I'll call this step three. Um, step one is the picture which they drew for us. Uh, step one is, step two then is to write down the, the given rate, which they gave us dh dt. Um, and that's equal to one tenth and the square root of h. So we have our picture, we have our given rate, we have the rate we want to find. Step four, we want to do our formula, and we need a formula that connects V and H. Now, there seems to be an extra variable in here, but it's really not a variable. Um, we, want a, we want V, we want H, right? These two variables. The one we don't really care about is the R, but that's okay. It actually isn't a variable at all. It's a fixed value. They tell us that the diameter is two, which means that the radius is 1. So it's not really a variable, it's a fixed value. Um, and therefore, V is actually more in simplified form, pi H. Right? Um, next, for step 5, we take the derivative of that stuff with respect to time, which would be dV over dt is equal to pi dH dt. Um, so, next step, um, in step six, we're going to plug in what we know. Now, I know dh dt is this, so I'm just going to plug that in there. And we also know that h is 4, so now I'm going to plug that in for h. Um, and then we want to include our units. Now, that's what we wanted. That's the final answer there. You could simplify this. You could take the square root of 4 and get 2, and then put it on top and reduce the fraction and put the pi on top. Um, I'm going to leave it off, actually, and I'm just going to do this because, remember, on FRQ, you don't really have to simplify it. So, how would you be graded on this problem? Well, uh, when it comes to the FRQs for these types of problems, they, they may grade it differently in different circumstances, but I'll tell you there's two steps that I guarantee you that they're going to get credit for. And this, this question actually is a two-point question. They're going to want to see this, the fact that you have the differential equation there. They're not going to give you credit for this, but you need to do that in order to get this, which is the differential equation, because that's where the calculus really starts is right there. Um, and then they're going to give you another point for the answer, and it's possible that they'll only give you one point for the answer with the units, or they might give you one point for the answer and one point for the units. 
But on this question, they're only giving one point for the answer with the units. So these are your two places where you get two points on your problem. All right, let's go ahead and move on and take a look at part B. All right, so for part B, um, they're telling us that the height of the water is three feet, meaning H equals three, right? Um, they want to know, is the rate of change of the height? That's dHdt. So they're asking me something about dHdt. They want to know, is that increasing or decreasing? All right, so if you want to know if this value is increasing or decreasing, well, that, that means we want to know, um, is its derivative positive or negative? So what I want to do is I want to take dH dt, that's the rate of change of the height, and what I want to do is I want to find the derivative of that with respect to time. And if I end up with a positive answer, that means dH dt is increasing. If I end up with a negative answer, that would mean dH dt is decreasing. Now, now why is that? Well, anytime you take the derivative of something, you have a slope, right? So here's my something, and if I take the derivative of it, I'm finding its slope. If I have a positive slope, that means that something is increasing. And if I have a negative slope, that means it's decreasing. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to find the derivative of dh dt, which basically means we're going to be finding the second derivative. Okay. So I'm going to take this function here and I'm going to find its derivative. dH dt is equal to negative 1 over 10 square root of h. Right? So applying that here, we get the second derivative. Applying it here, the negative 1 tenth is going to stay because it's a constant multiple. Taking the derivative of a square root, oh, and this is supposed to be h, by the way. The derivative of a square root is always 1 over 2 times that square root times the derivative of the inside, which is the another dh dt. It's like a chain rule, right? When these don't match, you always get a dh dt, or and I guess you say an h prime. Uh, so there's that. Um, now, that's the derivative. Now, the question is, is it increasing or decreasing? when the height is 3. So it's going to be negative 1 tenth times 1 over 2 times the square root of 3 times dh dt. Now dh dt, the original problem is right here. h goes there, but we're going to replace the h with 3. So I've got a negative and a negative, which is positive, and then another positive. It comes out positive. I'm going to put that, meaning it's greater than zero, and therefore, if the second derivative is positive, that means the first derivative is increasing. There we go. So what do we do here? Step one, we find the derivative. Step two, we plug in the values that they give us. Step three, we interpret the results. So derivative, plug, interpret. Now, how would they be grading this? Um, it's, it's worth three points. Um, now, these two steps would be worth two points. Okay? Um, it's not necessarily that you get one point for this and one point for this. It's just they're giving it two points for finding the derivative and, and doing that process correctly. Um, they might not do it exactly the same way I did in terms of breaking it up into those two parts, but it is worth two points nonetheless. Um, the third step is worth one point where you actually interpret the results and say, okay, since the second derivative is greater than zero or positive, in other words, um, dh dt is increasing. Okay, so there's your, that's a three-point question there. Let's move on to our next one. All right, so on page 82, we're doing uh, numbers 4a and 4d. So let's go ahead and begin with 4a. First of all, let's read our given information. The height of a tree at time t is given by the twice differentiable function h 
where H is measured in meters and T is measured in years. Selected values of H are given the table above. So basically, after this many years, the tree is this tall. Or after three years, it's that many meters tall and so on. So that's our given information there. Use the data in the table to estimate H prime of six. Okay, so in class we talked about how if you have a table, you can estimate an instantaneous rate of change by picking the two numbers closest to it. So six is closest to five and seven. So what we would do here is we would say H prime of six is relatively equal to the average rate of change from seven to five. Now, h of 7, as you guys can see from the table, is 11, and h of 5 is 6. So we have 11 minus 6 over 7 minus 5, which is 5 over 2. Okay? Now we want to put, make sure we know what our units are. The numbers on top are height values, which are measured in meters, and the units on the bottom are measured in years. So this is meters per year, basically. Now, anytime you have a rate of change that is positive, that means that the original function is increasing. So, basically our interpretation, as you guys may recall, it has to have three parts to it. It has to have input units. It has to have output units. And then we have to have the context. In other words, the story problem has to be included in our explanation. So the input unit, 6, was the number between 5 and 7. The input unit, therefore, is a year value. The output unit is the one we got over here. That was meters per year. The context is, is the fact that the height is increasing by this much um, at the point in time when we are at year 6. So the proper interpretation would be as follows. So we can say the height of the tree is increasing at a rate of 5 over 2 meters per year when t equals 6 years. Now here's a better way to say it. Um, so I don't know, maybe it's not really a better way. It's, it's just another way. But what, what I like about this way over here is that we're stating that this is an instantaneous rate of change. And it's approximately 5 over 2 meters per year at t equals 6. It's not, this is because this is an estimation, right? This is not an exact thing. Now, I'm pretty sure that they would give you full credit for either one of these, okay? But how would they grade you? You would get one point for just finding the 5 over 2 to begin with, so long as you showed your work. So that's worth one point. And then your interpretation at the end is also worth one point. So this is a two-point question. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our last question here, number four. Okay, so the height of the tree in meters can also be modeled by the function g. So g represents the height and once again that's in meters. And it says here that x is the diameter. And that's also going to be in meters. I think one of the things that makes this problem challenging, and it'll be like that on your practice as well, is that I'm using different variables. Um, this is another related rate question you'll see in a minute. And when we do related rate questions, you've always been allowed to pick whatever variables you want to based on the word problem. Um, but here we have to use G and X. Okay, so we got to keep in mind what those variables are and what they represent. All right, so anyway. We have G represents the height, and we have X as the diameter. It says when the tree is 50 meters tall. Okay, in other words, there's some point in time when the height is equal to 50. Um, the diameter of the base is increasing at a rate of 0 0.03. So the diameter of the base is increasing at a rate of 0 0.03 meters per year. According to this model, what is the rate of change of the height of the tree with respect to time in meters per year at the time when the tree is 50 meters tall. So hopefully you guys can recognize this as a related rate question. Why is it a related rate question? Because it's asking for a rate and it gives you a rate. 
And so that's a perfect setup. Now this problem is not a geometry problem, so we're not going to draw a picture. So we'll be skipping step one, where you draw the picture. But step two, we want to identify the rate that's given. The given rate is this one here. It says the base, the diameter is increasing. Now, typically, if, it, if we were doing this, we would write d, 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 t, right? Because that would mean the diameter, the d there would be diameter. But the problem is we don't have the freedom to pick what variable we want to. This time we have to use the variable they give us. The variable for diameter is x. So dx dt is 0 0.03 meters per year. All right. Step three, we want to identify what rate we're trying to find. We're trying to find what the rate of change of the height is. Now, once again, usually we would probably put an h here for height, right? But that's not the variable we're using. We're using g. So I'm going to put g there. All right. And that's the one that I want to find. And the problem tells you that the units are supposed to be meters per year also. So now I need to find a formula that will connect the height of the tree to the diameter. Well, that's actually pretty easy if, if you recognize it. It's right there. There's my equation with g and x in it. So I'm going to go ahead and just write it down. Now the next step is to take this formula that connects those two variables and to find the derivative of it. And this is another thing that makes this problem interesting. It's the fact that you need to remember how to do your derivatives because this is not just a simple derivative. This is going to be a quotient rule. Okay? So, actually, let me back up and rewrite. I don't want to put g prime. I'm going to write that as dg dt, d, uh, dx. No, dt, actually. dt, my bad. So, we want to take the derivative of this whole thing with respect to time, right? So, Taking the derivative of that, we get dg dt. Now, how do we do the derivative of this? Well, that's a quotient rule. So we're going to do low d high. Now, the derivative of the top is 100. However, we're taking the derivative of something with an x in it with respect to t. So we get an x prime there, right? But remember, when we do these related rate questions, we don't use the prime notation. Instead, we use the dx dt notation. So we get a dx dt there. So low d high minus high d low. The derivative of the bottom, well, that would typically be just 1. But since we're taking the derivative of an expression with an x with respect to t, we get another dx dt there. Draw a line and square below. All right, so there's that. All right, step six, we're ready to start plugging some stuff in there. Um, so here we go. Um, do I know what x is? We do. It's 50. Do I know what dx dt is? We do. It's 0 0.03. So actually, we know everything. We don't need to find anything. tight fit here. I don't know if I'll be able to get it all in there. Be a 0 0.03 squished in there. All over 1 plus 50 squared. Um, and my units, as we already know, is meters per year. And I'm going to stop there. I don't have to simplify this. This is a um, an FRQ and an FRQs. All of that stuff's just basic math, so there's no point in simplifying it. So I just plugged in 50 for the x and 0 0.03 for the um, dx dt, and we're good. So there's our answer, um, and we're good to go. All right, so that ends it. That's step six. Now, how would they grade this one? Let's take a look. Once again, for these related rate questions, how they're doing it is, is they are giving you one point, or actually two points, for finding the derivative appropriately. Um, and then they're going to be giving one point for getting the final answer with the units. Um, so that's that. All right, well, that does it. Hopefully you guys are ready to do your student practice, and uh, good luck with that, and we'll see you guys in class.